Hey guys, number one Marmaduke fan here. Uh, these are my Marvel Walmart bundle comics. Marvel's kind of do 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 do. Sadly, realized it's going to have to compete with DC for shelf space at uh, Walmart. And I did a little video where I showed off all of my Walmart buys and said it looked like DC was kicking Marvel's butt in terms of bang for your buck. Then when I opened it, one of the three comics in the Marvel pack was one of these like giant hundred page uh like 9.99 comics so marvel's doing a better job than i thought they were doing for bang for your buck at walmart however there's some dumb packaging decisions being made i would i had no idea looking at it because uh, this is the comic at the front that there was a hundred page comic in here so you're not advertising that you have a good bang for your buck comic in there Second, there's a Spider-Man comic in here. So why is Ultraman at the front? If what you're competing for is the is the Walmart target audience, then the target audience is, oh, look, it's Spider-Man, Spider-Man and Venom. I love Spider-Man and Venom. So I got this because Ultraman was at the front, and I my thinking was, I don't like any of these Marvel comics, but I've never heard of Ultraman, and people in Japan think he's cool. So I will give it a shot. And this actually ended up being my favorite of... Uh, the three. Let's do a quick review. Incoming, I don't even know where the artist credits were, and there are like a hundred artists working on this. So it had a really good opening. I was really intrigued, and then it, it fell off a cliff because the theme is it's it, it basically has like a hundred characters, and it has each character like investigate this mystery, and then they give the clue to someone else, and then that person says, oh, these are some weird numbers. I'll go ask Reed Richards. Hey, Reed Richards, what do you think these weird, weird numbers are? I don't know. I'll go ask uh, Night Thrasher. Night Thrasher, what do you think these weird numbers are? I don't know. I'll go ask Nova. Nova, what do you think these weird numbers are? I was dead and I came back to life. Oh, good grief. It's all a setup for the Empire uh, event. Uh, I just hated it. So I'll show you like the cool opening. The cool opening is it introduces you to some character I've never heard of. He's got a really unique power where... He can he can copy the power of people he's in close proximity to, and his mask gives him sort of intuition into the cosmos. And he's like a detective in a cool fedora and suit, hunting down an evil cult. And I think, wow, I've never heard of this guy. That's a really cool power. Wow, I love murder mysteries. Wow, I love hunting down cults. And then after kind of like every scene, the artist changes and the new artist takes over. So I was really digging the new art and then kind of like, oh, a style change and it's Daredevil and Elektra. And then, oh, it's a style change and it's Je Jessica Jones. And oh, it's a style change. It's Captain Marvel. Oh, it's a style change. It's the Avengers. No, it's a style change. It's uh, Nova and everybody's dead and come back to life. And uh, all of the, it's, it's just bad memories. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to hold on. It, even if it's a variant cover, I don't, I do not care about this comic. I am giving it away. Oh, I highlight, explain this to me. I think what's supposed to be happening is he's supposed to be coming at the camera and it's like the camera's bending down and like looking through your legs as you watch uh, Ghost Rider zoom away in the distance. But it, it's just, it's just an upside down panel. Like it's not even like a cool, like, oh, there's water on there. And that's the reflection in the water of what's going on above it. It's just an upside down panel. Like, like Why? 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 Why did you do this thing? Be gone. Okay, so now that we got the, what was allegedly supposed to be the best deal out of the way, uh, Spider-Man Venom, Double Trouble. This is a perfectly fun little kids comic with the lovely Team Guri Hero doing art. Uh, the writer is Mariko Tamaki, who I haven't had a good impression of her work so far. This, it's just a fun little, you know, classic cartoon adventure story where uh, uh, Spider-Man and Venom are roommates and they have switched bodies. And there's some cutesy stuff about, like, like they have to explain that Spider-Man and Venom have switched bodies. So she has a little editorial note right in the middle of the speech bubble, some fun little gags like that. Guri Hero, of course, draw everything with kind of like their... Uh, childlike simplicity and charm so it would be very fun for a kid the characters are very cute and expressive uh the only thing i didn't like is i thought that spider-man acted a, so it's spider-man in venom's body i thought he acted a little bit simpy uh like i get the theme is that venom is the tough and mean guy and spider-man's the good guy but i feel like spider-man needs a little bit of that new york new york ease in him where he'll he'll kind of like match venom uh point for point 
And, you know, there's goofy stuff like explosions and the characters get mind swapped again as animals. It, it's great. Uh, the other neat thing it did is this is a third issue, but it told me everything I needed to do to be caught up and get a feel for what's going on. So a kid would love it. A, I like it when they make simple, dumb, fun books for kids. This is exactly a what that is, a simple, dumb, fun book for kids. Good job, Mariko Tamaki. Uh, and the Guri Hero art is a bonus. Uh, the Rise of Ultraman, this is my favorite comic out of the bunch. Uh, and I've never heard anything about Ultraman before. The uh, writer, actually, I got to like hop ahead a little bit to find the credits, don't I? Here we go. Okay. Uh, the main write, uh, story was written by, oh, my, Kyle Higgins and Matt Groom. And the artists were Ed McGinnis and Espen uh, Grundetjern. And I've never heard of Grundetjern. Ed McGinnis is a very iconic superhero artist. With a very uh, What I love about McGinnis is he does like, you know, really good, strong, muscular superheroes, but he doesn't let that stop him from doing like really expressive and identifiable characters like some people they master the art of like drawing a really buff guy but they don't know how to make their characters look fun and i think mcginnis has just like ma mastered it mcginnis has reached like this level of mastery uh and i don't know how like they don't describe exactly how the art duties are being divided up, up but it's fantastic artistically so good job for both of the artists uh i don't know anything about ultraman so i'm going to show that ignorance but kind of shows you a pilot who seems to be blown up, but then encounters what I'm guessing is the alien race that Ultraman comes from. And then we skip over to like a young, uh, basically secret agent who's young, starting out at the secret agency to protect Earth from Kaiju. Uh, she's, we can tell she's ambitious. We can tell she's overworked and she's barely making any time for her boyfriend and she wants some field experience and she gets lucky and there's an emergency where they say, You're, you haven't been qualified for the special weapons yet, but we could use you. So we're gonna get you out there and give you some field experience so she has a little struggle you know it's hard to fight the kaiju uh but it's and it's a learning experience and we meet her boyfriend and her boyfriend flunked out of the program so he knows about the aliens but they haven't mind wiped him yet because he's going to be given a chance to reapply but he's kind of in this gray area where they might mind wipe him if he flunks or they'll let him into the program if he passes the test uh this all builds up to them encountering another one of these alien races that killed off the first guy or seemingly killed off the first guy and the government's policy on these aliens is sh shoot them on sight we want them dead 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 and they have some kind of psychic link with the alien where they can tell it's human and it has a soul and feelings and so they start regretting shoot shooting it instantly and it leaves off with some kind of mysterious connection happening between the boyfriend the boyfriend and the alien so will he become ultraman we will see uh, there are also two little bonus things. Ultra Q, oh, I gotta skip ahead, is a kind of black and white film noir style story written by Kyle Higgins and Matt Groom. Art is by Michael Cho. And what I like about what Michael Cho did is, A, the color kind of evokes an old-timey movie. Uh, the style is a little bit more kind of like solid old cartoony style. Uh, even th some of the things like the kaiju, when the kaiju shows up, it looks like a man in a rubber suit, which I'm guessing is exactly what they look like in, in Ultraman. They would have guys in rubber suits in the old TV show. So I like that it kind of evoked the, an old timey feel for this franchise while still making it look cool. Like I can tell that I, I, this is sort of comedically like a man in a rubber suit, but at the same time, it's also kind of, kind of threatening. So it's a good, it's a good balance. Uh, kind of like shows off like the super secret agency in the 1950s hunting down kaiju and sort of, uh, they sort of float the idea of like the French secret agency, the Japanese secret agency, you know, maybe we should make some sort of international group to deal with all of these, uh, evil alien monsters showing up. There's also Guri Hero again. They, uh, have these cute little PSAs, uh, with art by Guri Hero written by Kyle Higgins and Matt Groom that kind of tie into the universe where a cute little monster shows up and tells an agent, like, don't do stupid things when you're fighting kaiju. So it's sort of like PSA facts. And I love goofy PSAs. It's really clever world building because it actually reveals some things like the agents need to know about the kaiju. Like they look like dinosaurs, but they're not as dumb as dinosaurs. They're much, they're much smarter. And it adds a little bit of whimsy and humor 
to the world. And it leaves off with a little uh, preview at the end of big things to come of Ultraman fighting Kaiju. So I don't know anything about this franchise, but an absolutely excellent comic in that it focuses on characters, gives us a central line to follow, uh, leaves us with some mystery of big things uh, that would happen. There was a lot of talking in this issue, but they spiced it up. A lot of the, the talky talky scenes had some good, like, emotional content for the characters, you know, feeling frustrated about the feelings. The girl got in, but her boyfriend didn't. So that's that that creates some tension for them. There's several action sequences, so it keeps it feeling fresh and exciting. And the bonus stuff was really fun and tied into the whole world. So coming from a non a guy who knows absolutely nothing about Ultraman, this was this is the comic I'm keeping. These two are getting done. Oh, I want to do a giveaway. Giveaway, 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 giveaway. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm just going to I'm just gonna do it. Da -da 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 -da. Where's the sticker? I can't find it. No, no, I want to do a giveaway. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to set you guys down. So you need a Marvel account, and then you go and you enter this number, and you will get this great Ultraman comic for free. Go have fun, somebody. Enjoy. Normal Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. Catch you later.